As adult action figure collectors, we are very passionate and very detail-oriented. So it's no shock that Rabble Rabble tends to be the uh, call of our species. And lately, the Rabble Rabble has basically been around street dates and when toys are available of products. Now, this ranges from toys not being available, like 2019 and Baby Yoda's total absence from the toy aisle, because, well, they would just make it up the next year, and this way it kept the surprise. And then there's toys that ruin surprises, like the uh, Family That Binds Us Together Plasma Series Ghostbuster 2-Pack, which contained a character that actually spoiled the movie for me, because I hadn't seen the movie yet before I saw this 2-Pack. Although, major props to Ghostbuster News for that image and for blurring it out correctly. Awesome, guys. Alright, so what about the elephant in the room? The fact that leaked items that weren't held back for street dates caused major toy companies to cancel YouTube and other fan sites. I've made a uh, video about this a week or so ago. But there's still a lot of questions about this issue, and a lot of them pertain to why we even have street dates, and kind of whether or not, well, who's responsible, obviously, you know, the, the, the fan who buys the product from not showing it online, the retailer who shouldn't have sold it to you, the manufacturer who should have restricted it. More importantly, can we fix it? Is there a way to, if there has to be a street date, can it be easier, or is there something that can be done to prevent these kind of leaks from happening? So I was visiting my local Target earlier last week, and I happened to see this uh, push cart out on the aisle by, or you know, by the toy aisle. And I was like, "Ooh, new toys going out. Let's see what's on on the uh, pallet." So I, you know, I usually just kind of poke around, you know, just looking, see. I mean, hey, maybe I'll score, and there'll be something like really cool that hasn't actually been put on the shelf yet um, that I'm looking for. Uh, but otherwise, it's mostly professional curiosity. And in that sense, I draw your attention to Exhibit A, this one right here in the middle. So all the toys on this pallet are good to go, ready to be put out, except this one. Well, or at least it shouldn't be on this pallet, because if you can see here, I'll show you at a different angle. Do not set until March 6th, 2022. Today is February 24th. I'm recording this, so I don't know when it'll go live, probably a few days from now. So, definitely not March 6th yet. So, this has made it on the, you know, put it out there palette. It will probably be put out, um, and, you know, or you know, maybe it will get caught but by the stock person. And that's actually what it's really all about, is the stock people, their job is to get the stuff out on the shelf, and they're, they're not going to read every, t you know, all of the, the labeling. I mean, especially that bar is just a black bar, and there's tons of black bars on all of these MasterCard, and so how you're going to note that one, that's the issue, is items that are supposed to be street dated, while the master cartons say, do not put out until XX date, this is exactly right here is the step where the misstep happens, In very much, the blame isn't on the stock people, I mean, their job is to put the stuff out, not to read master cartons. The issue is that big box stores aren't toy stores. I've talked before, and I've made a few videos, I'll link one at the end of this, about how big box stores, Walmarts, Targets, Meyer, etc., etc., have sort of a one per week per peg rule. So if someone comes in and buys the entire case pack of a new set, like a Marvel Legends or a G.I. Joe Classified or whatever it is, and they buy all the figures because they want to get, say, the build a figure, so they're encouraged to purchase the full set, well, now they've sold, you know, seven weeks of product and they only needed to sell one per week. So assuming that they're on one peg. So that's part of the issue is that big box stores just aren't set up for collector type product that includes street dates. Street dates meaning you know a set date when an item is to be set out. So a lot of this actually comes down to the differences between Target and Walmart, the two largest big box stores, although there's tw like twice as many Walmarts. Target and Walmart, while they're very similar as far as their retailers that sell you know, tons of items, they do have different points of, well, unique points of difference. Target has a very clean environment, but more so they want to create a, a um, experience for your Target run. They've even embraced that phrase, the Target run, which is something that, you know, just customers were saying. So when they have end cap displays in the toil, they have two types. One is seasonal. This is a seasonal one. It was celebrating an event, but an event that was going to go for a full several months or, you know, a month long. 
And then they have what are called the feature end caps. And these tend to be where there is some kind of large thing, in this case a T-Rex, that is going to draw you towards the aisle from far away. It's the same technique Disneyland uses with its mountains and the different rides. They're, they're meant to be beacons that pull you into the land. So in this case, the uh, T-Rex from Jurassic Park is to pull you into the toy aisle and also act as an advertisement for the movie. So obviously this isn't limited just to Jurassic Park movies. There have been tons of what are called feature end caps, and they're usually interactive, and they're meant to get you to sort of stop and have an experience while at Target. Walmart, on the other hand, is, I mean, obviously it's both the world's largest retailer uh, with brick and mortar, I guess, uh, 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 well, we're not going to talk about online. The, the difference between Target and Walmart is much more that Walmart is not about giving you as much an experience as much as a low price. You go to Walmart, you are going to get the lowest price possible. And that's what they've built most of their branding around. They, whether or not you go home and you know tell people stories about seeing the giant T-Rex display in the toy aisle isn't what they're concerned about. They want to just be the low price leader and give you that you know, receipt. <laughs> so much like Target, they also have two types of toy end caps. The first, again, is a, well, actually, I shouldn't say the first. The main one they, that Walmart does is what you might call generic toys. They're just games. And I mean, you know, even that one had, had soda bottles on the bottom or, you know, this is pre-packed WWE figures. They're not tied to a specific event or to a season. They're just toys that sell really well. Now, their version of a feature end cap, like what Target does with a major movie, is they have a pre-pack drop. And this can either be in the middle of an aisle, as what the aisle is called the runway, and a pre-pack display can be dropped in the middle, or it can be set up on an end cap. And this is an example of a Star Wars pre-pack end cap. So you can see there's two stacked, one on top of each other, and they come pre-assembled and pre uh, well, packed with product inside. So all the stock person has to do is put it in place. An end cap like this, you have to restock it. When the Monopolies sell out or the Pepsis sell out, more items have to be brought in. With a pre-pack, it is put up. When it sells out, it's taken down. Or it has a set amount of time, and then it's taken down. There can still be items in the toy aisle for this brand. The end caps, or rather the pre-packed end caps, or palette displays are incremental display space. And this is really what it's all about, is trying to secure space above and beyond your planogram space in the aisle. The more space you have, the more product you have out there, the more you're going to sell. So if you can secure an end cap or a pre-packed display, like this is, so this is an example of how they, they you know, this is paper towels or something like that, with Swiffer sweepers. But yeah, so the, the, the employees just take off an outer shell and boom, these things just pop right out, preloaded with product. And it's obviously not just the toy industry that does this. Lots and lots of products do this, where the product's already in there, display is already set up. All the stock person has to do is basically lift off the cover, kind of like, uh, you know, like if you have a DVD box set or something, and there's a slip cover over it. Sometimes pre-packed displays are set up for certain events, and it can range from sporting events to major movies or you know pop culture events. When I was working on the Green Lantern toy line for Mattel, we had a pre-packed pallet at Toys R Us that, again, was incremental to the space that Green Lantern had in the aisle, and this allowed us to secure more sales and offer more SKUs for Toys R Us. They could have more items and more variety than another retailer because they were able to accommodate more space for the brand. All right, so why are we talking about all of these pre-packed solutions? Well, everybody wants them, but only a select few are going to be able to get them because retail only has so much space, even with incremental space. And let's face it, when if you ask the toy industry, who wants to be in the toy aisle at a major retailer, you can bet every single one will raise their hands. So that brings us all back to this. When we have an item that has a specific street date and it's put out on a cart to go out, it's going to wind up violating that street date. Hopefully this one won't lead to the same problems that happened with, uh, so was it Jurassic World toys, Mattel, and the fan sites from a few weeks back. I can't see that happening here. But really, the solution is twofold. It's, a, it's pallets, first of all. I mean, not empty pallets like this. I mean pallets that are full of product. That's how they arrive in stores, like this. So... Pallets, when they arrive, are then 
put into the proper sort of uh, temporary storage area in the back of you know a major retailer until they're needed on the floor. Back space is just as allocated and organized as the space on with the customer side. On the other hand, when a pallet arrives, instead of putting it away, it can be shrink-wrapped and put off to the side. This is how Walmart tends to handle their pre-packed solutions for movie events. So this way, the product doesn't leak out. Now, there might be a catch with this solution, though. So you could say, oh, great, well, everyone could get pallets. Well, not really. You kind of have to be big enough. That's the catch. Not every brand can support enough SKUs to justify enough retail space that they would basically get an extra pallet or, or, you know, or pre-packed end cap. So if you're going to be, say, pallet worthy, if you will, as a brand, you have to kind of consider two things. Are you big enough? And can you have enough SKUs to demand one? I hope this was a little bit of an insight as to how uh, slip-ups happen and possible solutions to keeping street dates. We'll see how the toy industry continues to view this ongoing issue. Let me know what you think. Do you have any thoughts on this? Have you ever encountered product that's out before the street date? Let me know in the comments below, and uh, thanks for watching.